Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and over the past few weeks I've been covering different app updates, and many of you enjoyed those, whether they were from Apple or third-party developers, so I thought we'd continue that with the fourth week of April 2022. The first app that's been updated this week is WhatsApp. It seems like WhatsApp is getting a bunch of different updates and what they've updated this time around is it now supports up to 32 people in a voice call that's now live. So if you want to make a conference call, you can do that. And in the future, like I mentioned before, you'll be able to have emoji reactions and other things that will be in a future update. Also recently from within a beta version of WhatsApp, it looks like they're working on letting you use the app on multiple iPhones and tablets and hopefully even Mac at the same exact time, similar to what we can do with iMessage. So in the United States, most people use iMessage on an iPhone, or if you're an Android phone, they're using SMS around the world. Most people are using WhatsApp. So to have similar functionality and then iMessage may eventually integrate across all different messaging platforms based off a recent EU law. So maybe we'll have them interoperate in the future, but for now we can call 32 people at once with WhatsApp. There's a recipe app that was just updated called Pestle and this got some major updates. If you want to maybe scan some food, you can do that and you can see the updates here. So you can scan recipes, you can discover recipes of course, and some of this requires that you actually subscribe to them, but they've been updated quite a bit with a new editor and more. So this allows you to create recipes based on what you're seeing, create a shopping list, and then you can just use it if you want to have a cookbook, a shopping list and a meal plan. And then of course you've got your settings, but this has been updated majorly. So you can use this on iPhone or iPad to maybe cook a different recipe, plan out your week for different meals and more. Now on the iPad, we've had Swift Playgrounds for a little while. Swift Playgrounds 4 was heavily updated to allow you to even program from within. And it's an app from Apple, you can see here. So if we go into my app here, wait for it to load, it takes a moment to download. And we can go into my app and then create a different app and look at the app preview over here on the right. Apple is now sending out invites for developers to try out Playgrounds 4.1. Currently we're on 4.0 and it looks like we're going to get a major update again with some enhancements and more. Now we may not see this until June around WWDC or later, but it looks like it's getting a major update very, very soon. Now, if you use the app Notability, that's got an update as well if you're a subscriber. Now, notability is something I know that quite a few people use around the world, depending on whether that's in a school or not, but notability has a new update with a ruler. So if you're a plus subscriber, you can actually use a ruler by using two fingers. Now, this is sort of a feature we've had in the notes app within iPhone for quite some time, but you can have that now here by using two fingers, activate the ruler. Let me show you what it looks like in notes as well. If you want to use that as an alternative. So within notes, if you create a new note, tap on the little drawing icon or pen, and then you've got a little ruler here. You can use the ruler, move it around however you'd like. And so it's a similar ruler, but built into notability now. So that has been updated. One thing worth noting on the app store is Apple sent a notice to many developers that had not updated their app in the past two years, telling them that it would be removed from sale unless it was updated. So many app developers are going to have to update their app and then resubmit them to make sure that they stay on the app store. This is something that's made quite a few developers a bit frustrated, but it seems that they need to update the code to make it more compliant with iOS 15 and their latest rules on privacy and more. So that's something they've recently pushed out. Developers will have to update that code and then resubmit it and it should take care of the problem. So if you see an app disappear from the app store, that's why, but you'll still be able to use the apps that you already have. But just if you see that, keep in mind that may be what's going on. Now there was a bunch of other apps that were updated this week as well with stability and bug fixes. I didn't want to go into them individually because they're mostly just bug fixes and stability, but let me go through a list of what those apps are. And then we'll take a look at some of the Mac apps that have been updated or a couple of them. The first one is MindNode. MindNode has been updated with bugs and stability. Spotify has also been updated. YouTube and YouTube studio. They seem to get updates almost weekly for that reason, but YouTube and YouTube studio have been updated. Snapchat has been updated as well as discord and also Instagram. So I have a discord server. It's linked in the description. And then Instagram was updated with bug fixes and more lots of different bug fixes this week. And those were all updated along with probably many other apps to comply with 
that maybe not being updated in the past two years. So you may see an influx of a bunch of different apps that need to be updated. On the Mac, there's good news if you use Nvidia GeForce Now for game streaming. They've updated it to support M1 processors natively. This should help with performance dramatically. And as you can see here, it says your Odyssey awaits stream Lost Ark to nearly any device this GFN Thursday. And it says new 2.0.40 update delivers Apple M1 processor native support and more. So that's something that's been updated. If you want to stream games, that's available now. Also, if you use Microsoft Teams, there's a new beta version that has been optimized for Apple Silicon Macs. So they've added native M1 support, and that should be a universal app that we'll see rolling out to the public very soon. But at least it's available now and they're working on it. So that should help with different things such as battery life if you're using a MacBook or just performance overall. My favorite image editing app, Pixelmator Pro, has been updated to version 2.4.2 this week. It adds the ability to set the frame rate and duration of motion projects. It adds improvements and fixes and more. So quite a few updates in this one. So if you were having issues with maybe clipping masks, there were some updates to that as well as font sizes being more precise with decimal values and more. So that's everything from this past week. And while that's not a ton of features and changes, there were quite a few updates across a lot of different apps for bug fixes and stability. Typically I go over what's most popular as far as different apps such as WhatsApp or different popular apps, whether that be Minecraft or anything else. I look at what's most popular, what was updated, and if there's any apps you'd like me to cover, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Also, the Tesla app was updated, and I didn't want to mention it as you need to have a car to actually utilize this app, but they did update it and you can see the version history here. So you can manage lease returns and the ability to transfer car ownership in select countries, view status and updates of open energy service cases. So that's something that's actually been updated this week, a few days ago in the Tesla app, but not a whole lot of changes this week, tons of bug fixes to many different apps. And hopefully we'll see some additional features in the future, especially when we see iOS 16, we should see some updates with that. So usually they'll have to update their apps by the time September rolls around and iOS 16 will be released to the public. If there's any other apps you'd like to have me cover in this update, please let me know in the comments below as I'll try to do this every week if there's any other significant updates. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.